World One community. Hey, yeah. check this out, man. I know it's early, 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 late, early in the morning. But um, I just was just sitting up, man. I was watching this here, man. I just want to kind of just dissect it a little bit. I just want y'all to just roll with me, man. Just, just you know, tell me what y'all think in the comments or whatever. I wish I could just bring somebody in on live so we could just kind of dissect it together. But I'm going to be narrating some of this stuff, man. And shout out to uh, ABC News because I am using y'all stuff. All right, <laughs> let's get it. Children in her apartment by Louisville Metro Police during the botched execution of a no-knock search warrant in March. Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron is about to announce the grand jury decision, which we've just learned. Charges against one officer for wanton endangerment, no charges for the other two officers who fired their weapons, or the fourth officer who filed the request for the no-knock warrant, who also faced possible charges tied to discrepancies in how that warrant was obtained. The city of Louisville, on edge, under a state of emergency right now, streets are blocked off and many buildings boarded up in anticipation of the decision. Protests there in Louisville related to Taylor's death demanding charges for the officers involved, all of them, have been taking place for more than 100 days. I want to go to ABC's Alex Perez right now in downtown Louisville and this no doubt is a stunning decision, Alex. You've been covering this story from the get-go and one of the things that stood out to me was that the victims named in the grand jury report appear to be neighbors of Breonna Taylor, but not Breonna Taylor or her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, who were in the apartment when the shooting began. Yeah, that's correct, Tom. What we heard from that judge who was reading the grand jury indictment, we did not hear Brianna Taylor's name. These charges of wanton endangerment relate to neighbors who were in that apartment complex. Now, this officer, Brett Hankinson, he's the officer that has since been fired from the Louisville Police Department. He is contesting that firing, but he's the officer that's accused of firing his weapon aimlessly, not having a shot through a wall, through a window. And the charges that he's facing based on the grand jury are really related to that, endangering the people who were in that apartment complex. Now, this news is not going to be welcomed by the thousands here and across the country who have been protesting Breonna Taylor's death. Say her name has become the chant that we've heard across the country for some six months now. And those... Now, I just have to pause it for a minute. Now, y'all see, right, this grand jury was basically for the neighbors, not for Breonna and not for the um, boyfriend. This is for the neighbors, y'all. Now, this is where we, as people, well, I'm going to speak for me, me as Weston. I'm thinking that this was justice for uh, Brianna, right? Um, I'm sorry, let me say her name right, Brianna. And we're looking at, okay, we, we want uh, justice for the cops, right? We want the cops to be, you know, go to jail, whatever. But that's not the case in this situation, man. Pay attention, all right? People have been calling for murder charges, the highest level of charges. That is not what we are seeing here. Also, we are only seeing charges against one officer. There are two other officers who were involved in that faulty botched warrant that took place that night. Those officers were not mentioned at all in the grand jury indictment. Now, the anxiety here in Louisville has been building, not only for the last six months, but particularly the last couple of days. The city here, the mayor, the police department declaring a state of emergency. I want you to take a look behind me here. You can see these Louisville police squad. Yeah, but we don't want to see all that, man. I'm, I'm going to scroll up a little bit uh, to, to the other um, attorney, okay? So bear with me, okay? Oh, yeah. Here we go was shot at least eight times. We now know some of the firing also hit neighboring apartments as well. Uh, we just heard the charges. Wanton endangerment. Now, Dan, some people were demanding murder charges. They were demanding manslaughter charges. Explain exactly what is wanton endangerment for this one officer, Brett Hankinson. Right. Well, let, let's first take a, a step back for a moment. There's a dispute about whether the door was knocked on or not. The police said they did knock on the door. Kenneth Walker saying it didn't happen. And let's also start from the perspective to make it clear. And I believe Kenneth Walker, that's just my personal opinion. I believe Kenneth Walker, all right? And the reason why I believe Kenneth Walker, we'll, we'll, we'll die. go ahead. I'm, I'm just gonna let him play. Here, Brianna, Brianna was an innocent here. There is no allegation that she did anything wrong. So the question then becomes as a legal matter, what is the responsibility of the officers? And you can see from the charge here, which is wanton endangerment, which is not reckless.
reckless homicide. And the reason I'm comparing it to that, to reckless homicide, is because in both cases, you're basically talking about the same legal standard, which is that someone fired um, recklessly, wantonly, uh, and in the case of homicide, the victim would have been Breonna Taylor. Here, the grand jury is saying the victims that we're charging for are the neighbors. Why? Because it seems uh, that the grand jury believed that regardless of whether this was a good warrant and whether it was a warrant that should have been um, executed, they had a legal right to be there. And when they were fired upon, they responded. That doesn't mean that that's the, the answer that it should be, but that is the legal explanation for why there is no charge here with regard to homicide because it seems clear the grand jurors did not believe uh, that uh, they acted beyond the scope of the warrant, except for Hankinson firing that weapon. And he was already fired for that, using the exact same language, wantonly firing that weapon. But yeah. Now, I just paused it real quick, okay? I'm gonna let him, I'm gonna let the guy say what he had to say, but Listen to how simple they made wantonly uh, the wanton endangerment, right? You know, when you when you when you think about it, you look at it like, okay, wow, this is I never heard of it before. Well, think about it. He they saying that he wanted to shoot the gun. He wanted to do this stuff. They saying, and, and we're talking about Hankerson. They not talking about the other cops because the other cops are are um is it exonerated or they they was justifiable because they was there because hankerson fired his gun everybody they was just there to react because they was an assistant an officer right basically and this is all my opinion all right so let it play out a little bit more explain here because people are going to say brianna taylor as you mentioned uh was just asleep in her apartment. She was with, with her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, who had a license to carry a gun, according to his attorney. We also know that uh, according to the no-knock warrant, the postal inspector has said, because it's all tied into to an ex-boyfriend that Breonna Taylor had, police were alleging that 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 apartment where she was staying at was allegedly receiving drug shipments. That's all in the no-knock warrant, but according to the postal inspector, they didn't know about this, and they had never signed off on this, or, or according to the postal inspector, spoke to the Louisville Metro Police Department about this issue. So if there are, there are questions surrounding the actual warrant, we get to the point where Breonna Taylor is shot and killed. People are going to wonder here, how, how are the only victims in this case the neighbors? Right, and, and I think that we need to separate out wrong from criminal. And again, I'm just explaining what the grand jury did here without making judgment on what they did. They clearly believed that it didn't rise to the level of being criminal because they had that legal document, that warrant, which allowed them to be in the house, to arrive at the house. Uh, again, debate about whether they knocked or didn't knock, but no question they had this warrant. Now, looking back at whether that warrant uh, should have been issued at all is a very important question, but that's a separate one from the officers who are now at the house with a legal warrant, and what did they do, and when did they do it? One of the officers... Now, pay attention to that now, what he said, right? said because they had a legal document that was the reason why they had grounds to be there now if they had the no knock warrant and they no no not warrant you could come in right so when they came in and my man started firing back <clears throat> right he started shooting because he thought it was the burglars or whatever um which he had every right and then the officers turn around they return fire so if just off instinct, right? If <laughs> Hankerson, the officer, he wasn't expecting nobody to have a gun when he went up in there. But however, they should have been alerted to something like that anyway, because they're looking for drugs. If if I'm you know, and then drugs come with money, violence, guns, of um, etc. And this is all alleged. So by them having this warrant. 
they went way around the whole Brianna case um, because, for one, me personally, I think I'm I'm just I'm I'm gonna hold my thoughts to myself. I'm just gonna let them finish. Okay, I I will come back with my you know my my conclusion on this, and I do apologize, y'all. Let's go. Sergeant John Madeley was shot in this incident as well. We do want to mention that. Uh, Dan, do we know if the grand jury's work is done? Do we think this is the end of this case? I've got to believe that it is. I, I mean, I've got to believe that this is the indictment. Because what a grand jury does not do is make announcements about who they're not indicting. Um, and we've seen this in the news a lot lately uh, with James Comey and others who've gotten into trouble for speaking too much about people who were not indicted. So typically, when someone isn't indicted, you simply don't discuss it, and the grand jury announces who they are indicting, which makes me think that what happened here is the grand jury evaluated evidence against all three officers, but in the end, or all four, and in the end decided just uh, to hand up indictments with regard to one. Dan, you're a legal expert. You, you've done probably thousands of these cases. From what you read about this case, from knowing this case, and, and seeing the charges and seeing whatever evidence has been available to the public so far, were you surprised by the charges brought? Well, look, I expected at least this charge, right? Uh, at least this charge, and I'm looking down to make sure that you know we get the exact uh, correct language. And I'm just not saying that because I, I just... This wanton endangerment in the first degree charge. Why did I expect that? Because the police department had already fired him for firing wantonly his weapon. So I think that was kind of the base here. The question of whether there would be additional charges, I didn't know what the grand jury was gonna do. Look, I know how maddening this must be to people out there who are saying, what about Brianna? What about her? Why doesn't she get justice here? And sometimes the legal system you know, doesn't work in that kind of linear way and where the where the criminal law can necessarily provide justice we have seen in a civil lawsuit brought by her family uh that her family has gotten a, a big settlement but most importantly major changes in the police department as a result of that settlement so when the question is should there have been criminal charges it gets tricky when the police have the legal right to have been there, even if it was a bad warrant, but if they have the legal right to be there, they're then fired upon. It is tough sometimes to get an indictment with that sort of fact pattern. But again, I want to reiterate, that doesn't change the reality that Brianna was the innocent victim here, whether it's in that indictment or not. All right, Dan, stand by for us. If you were just tuning in right now to ABC News, we are awaiting the Kentucky Attorney General to speak about...